time to go fishing. Hey gang, and welcome back for another video here on Joe Chem. Okay gang, in this video, as you might have guessed, we're all about fissure projections. Fissure projections are one of the ways you will crazily commonly see carbohydrates presented to you, or you might even be prompted to draw a specific sugar in its fissure projection form. And it, believe it or not, there's a lot of terminology, you know, regarding this, you know, fissure projection representation. So I want to take this video to talk about things like what is an aldose? What is a ketose? How can you talk about how many carbons are contained within a sugar? How can you identify whether you have a D or an L sugar? If someone gave you the D sugar, how do you draw the L sugar? And uh, just stuff like that. So right off the bat, here are three sugars, and I just want to start talking about these. We're going to talk about, you know, various sets to, you know, compare, contrast, and cover all the stuff, you know, you need to know. So if we take a look right here, right off the bat, what I want to highlight to you is you know you have a sugar, a carbohydrate, in this particular case, a monosaccharide, one unit of a sugar. You know, we see we have this Fischer projection, but at the very tippy, tippy top, what you see is a CHO, and remember, that's just an abbreviation for this. This is an aldehyde at the top. So in this particular case, we have aldehyde, aldehyde, aldehyde. We have alcohol, 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 right? CH2O, CH2OH, CH2OH, CH2OH. And then in between at every kind of rung on the Fischer projection, if you will, right? We have a carbon with a hydrogen and an you know, an alcohol, right? So, you know, HOH, OHH, you see the point. When you have a Fischer projection in this form, what you can refer to, and what we can say is all three of these sugars, they have varying, you know, levels of, you know, varying amounts of carbons in them, but we can talk about these being aldoses. So a sugar, an, a carbohydrate will always have an OSE ending, right? You can see glucose, arabinose, erythrose, right? So the OSE ending says, hey, by the way, you're dealing with a carbohydrate here. Now, because there is an aldehyde at the top of the sugar, that's why we can refer to these three generically as aldoses, okay, or aldoses. And obviously, there's more specific terminology that we can talk about with these three. So, right, if you have the aldehyde at the top, we're dealing with aldoses. Now, you can see in this particular sugar, there's one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. So if you wanted to even just reference how many carbons are in this sugar, you could refer to this as a hexose. Now, again, if someone said, hey, I have a hexose, you have no idea if it's an aldose or something different. You have no idea if, you know, a lot of characteristics about the sugar, but what you can, you know, commonly, you know, you can combine these types of terms. You could call this sugar, right? It's not so specific, but you could call it an aldo. My marker's dying on me. You could call it an aldohexose, okay? So hexose, you know, you could do trios, tetros, pentose, hexose. That just tells you, hey, you have a sugar and that's how many carbons are in it. And if you want to get even more specific with that type of terminology, which still doesn't identify the identity of the sugar, you can say, hey, I have an aldo, you know, I have an aldose and it has six carbons and it's a carbohydrate, right? I have an aldohexose, okay? Uh, we'll get to this in a second. So if I wanted to look at, you know, this is D arabinose. This is an aldose because we see that there's an aldehyde at the top. And there's one, two, three, four, five carbons in this sugar right here. So while I could just call this a pentose, right, identify it as a pentose and call it a day, if I even wanted to provide a little bit more information, obviously not naming, naming it explicitly for what it is, I could say, hey, by the way, this is an aldo pentose, right? It's an aldo, you know, it's an aldose and it has five carbons in it. And if we had something like this, one, two, three, four, right? I could say this is an aldo tetros. So you will commonly hear, you know, that type of terminology. Don't be thrown off if you hear someone maybe ask you to draw, draw a valid trios, draw a valid aldo pentose, right? It's just terminology. This part means you have an aldehyde at the top of your sugar, and this part, right, refers to how many carbons are within your sugar, okay? The next thing I want to drill into, right, that's kind of generic terminology, but getting into the more specifics, right? If you look right here, I'm sure you saw this D designation, and if you watched the video before this, you maybe heard me 
talk about I'm Harper dying on me. Talk about D versus L. Okay, so I just want to cover that quickly before we wrap this up, and then we talk about ketosis and then bring it all together. So if we look at this sugar, D glucose, for example, and I, if you have the sheet that I provided, or if you have a sheet given to you, from, you know, whether it's for, from your class or from your teacher, that gives you um, trioses to hexoses, right? And then, you know, tells you the names of various aldoses and ketoses, right? You'll see that, you know, every one of these sugars, right? Because each one of these positions right here is a stereocenter, right? So if you flip the position, if you flip the H and the OH, you will get a different, differently named sugar, right? There's different sugar identities. So in this particular example, this is what D-glucose looks like. It will never change. This is always your good friend, D-glucose. You know, glucose because it's, you know, glucose has six carbons and it has this specific type of stereochemistry. And the stereochemistry goes that if you were looking at this carbon, the side that the uh, alcohol is on, you know, since it's on the right-hand side, this is an R stereocenter. Since this is on the left-hand side, this is S, R, R. So that's a little trick right there. However, what does this D actually stand for? What it stands for is the positioning of the last OH on the last chiral center in your sugar. And since it is on the right-hand side, we're kind of reusing that dextrorotatory, levorotatory terminology. So if it's on the right-hand side, you will have D-glucose. So that's why you can say, okay, by looking at this, I don't even have to know that it's glucose. I can say it's a D-sugar because of the positioning of this OH, because this is my, you know, the last chiral center in my sugar. If I looked at D-arabinose, again, I wouldn't even have to know that it's arabinose to say this is a D-sugar, because I can look at this last chiral center and go, oh, the OH is on the right-hand side, that's got to be a D sugar and same thing with D erythrose. I would say, okay, the last, you know, stereocenter from where my aldehyde is, oh, the OH is on the right-hand side. That's got to be a T sugar, okay? So a little bit of where the D came from. Now what I want to explain, you know, let's just say someone asked you, and after this we'll take a, a little break and then we'll go into ketose land and then we'll do some examples to put it all together because I know it is a lot. If someone asks you to draw L-glucose, the thing is, it is a different, you know, there's different stereochemistry, but you only need to memorize or know your D-sugars because L-sugars are the enantiomer of D-sugars. Because if you think about it, let me draw this quickly. So this is going to be a aldohexose. There's two carbons, so one, two, three, four to get to six. Since this is an L-glucose, I know that my last, you know, the last stereo center in the molecule, the OH will be on the left-hand side. And the thing is, going from a D sugar to an L sugar, everything is just simply flipped. So if I'm starting from the bottom and going up, okay, so I had the OH on the right-hand side, it's now on the left. I'm moving up to this carbon, the OH was on the right-hand side, now it's on the left, and the hydrogen's on the other side. Up here, this carbon, the OH was on the left, now it's gonna be on the right. And finally, it was on the right, now it'll be on the left. So this right here is L-glucose. So if someone ever asks you to memorize sugars, don't try to be a hero. Save that precious brain power. You only need to know your D-glucose, and then the only other thing you have to remember is that the L version of that same sugar, right, whether it's an aldose or a ketose, is just, you know, the, the enantiomer of the D version, That's, that is what you get with the L version. So if someone asks you to draw the enantiomer of D-glucose, they're just secretly, cryptically asking you to draw L-glucose. Okay, again, that was a lot. So what I wanna do is just quickly tackle what do ketoses look like, uh, just get, you know, toss a few up here for you to see, and then uh, just maybe after that, just give you two random sugars, we can just pick the characteristics apart of them, about them, and close this video out. So stick with me. Okay, gang, moving on in to ketosis. Now, you might spot the difference right away between what an, al what an aldose is and what a ketose is. So it, if it makes sense that a, an aldose has an aldehyde at the top of the structure, well, then it makes sense that a ketose would have a ketone at the top of the structure. But it's not at the very top, right? Because a ketone has to be, you know, have a carbon on both sides of it. 
So what you'll see is you'll have two CH2OHs, both on the top and the bottom, but at the, you know, the next carbon from the top, you'll have a ketone. And it looks super weird drawing ketones on Fisher projections, but this is what they look like. So for example, applying the terminology we learned before, you can see these are both ketoses because we have a ketone on the second carbon from the top. And on this structure right here, one, two, three, four, five, and six, this would be a, you know, I could just call it a hexose, but it's really a keto hexose, right? Just like an al, you, you could talk about a six carbon aldehyde or a six carbon aldose, right? This is a keto hexose. And then one, two, three, four, five, this would be a keto pentose. So luckily a lot of that beginning part of the video was the bulk of the terminology. Now I feel like everything's starting to make some sense. And luckily the same goes for, you know, D and L ketoses. So again, you could, you know, without knowing what this particular sugar's name is, you know, knowing the, the difference in stereochemistry, you could zoom in on the stereo center farthest away from the ketone, look at the positioning of the OH, whether it's on the right or the left. Oh, it's on the right here. This is a, whatever sugar the name is here, which it happens to be fructose. It's the D version of fructose. And the same thing over here with rigolose. You'd say, okay, this is the stereo, you know, this is the stereo center that will determine whether this sugar is D or L. Oh, this is on the right hand side. This is going to be D, whatever it is, and it happens to be rigolose. So just for fun, if I wanted to draw L fructose, remember this is essentially just drawing the enantiomer of D fructose. So nothing changes on the non stereo centers, the not, you know, the a chiral centers. We still have this going on. I'm going to have one, two, three kind of crosses. Oh, well, I need to draw my ketone, right? One, two, three. Okay. So instead of left, right, right, I'm going to have right, left, left, right, left, left. And then knowing that this is now on the left hand side, it's now L fructose. Okay, gang. So again, it was a lot of terminology. Sorry that the you know this video is pushing over 10 minutes, but what I want to do to close it out is throw up some three random sugars. Just identify, you know, if it's a aldo or uh, aldose or ketose, how many carbons are in that sugar. And then, you know, this it will take again, you might have to memorize some sugar names, and it sucks. I'm sorry. I had to do it. I'm sorry if you had to do it. I hope you were just allowed to reference a piece of paper. Uh, so if you have to memorize them, memorize them. But what we'll do here is we'll just, you know, go through the characteristics and then name these suckers, call it a video. Okay, gang, to close this video out, I just want to run through these three examples, picking out their char characteristic characteristics and ultimately giving them their name, which you would get from either having the sugars memorized, right? You have know, the, the uh, aldotrioses to the aldohexoses and the same thing for the ketoses or looking at the chart provided, uh, which you'll see along with the worksheet for all the videos here on Jochem or something you've been given in your class. So for, with this sugar right here, right off the bat, one, two, three, four, five, six. So six carbons and we see aldehyde at the top, you know, CH2OH on the bottom. So this is certainly an aldose, but not only that, it's an aldohexose and before we slap a name on this sucker, we can see, okay, here's the stereo center farthest away from our top of the sugar. It's on the right hand side. So we know this is a D sugar. So typically the sugar charts you'll see are like the, the you know, the monosaccharide uh, things you'll be given. will only list the D sugars because implicitly that gives you all the L sugars, right? You just have to draw the enantiomer of the D sugar. So if you take a look at this, and I wrote these down because I don't, I'm not up to date on my sugars, but this is D tallos. You'd see that in the aldo hexoses. Okay, over here. So maybe right off the bat, what you're seeing is, yeah, the ketones just staring at you right in the face. So this is certainly a ketos and we have one, two, three, four carbons. So um, this is a, keto tetros okay and what you can see is you know we only have one stereo center in this molecule the nice part about uh, ketosis is that is that you know it effectively removes a stereo center for you by having that carbeal in the place where you usually have a stereo center so this is on the left hand side so we know this is an l sugar so at this point when you realize you have an l sugar 
feel free to you know draw its enantiomer because it's that thing you're going to find in your sugar chart, for example. So if you consulted your sugar chart, what you're really gonna be looking for with this sugar would technically be this, because that will be its D form. And if you, you know, consult the one I've given you or one you might have, this is going to be, and I'm gonna butcher this pronunciation, erythrulose. So, but the L version of that sugar, okay? And then last but not least, you can clearly see we have an aldose and one, two, three, four, five. So this is an aldopentose. You can see last stereo center. Okay, yeah, OH is on the left-hand side. So we know we have an L sugar and you'd be looking for its D version. So what you're technically going to be looking for would be something like one, two, three. So instead of right, right, left, it's going to be left, left, right. And then I'll fill these in. So if you looked for this in you know the chart with your D sugars, then you will find that this is lysose, but it's obviously L lysose here. Okay, gang, I hope if sugar terminology, this sugar terminology was confusing at first, at least in the context of a Fisher projection, that it's a little bit less scary uh, and makes sense now. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching me on YouTube, make sure to check out jochem.io where there are guided worksheets and solutions along with all these wonderful videos, 100% free. If you're watching me on Jochem, you're a rock star. And no matter what, I hope to see you all in the next video.